Hi, everyone. Uh, good evening from Vienna. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Making It in Austria. I'm your host, Adela Mejlijanic. And today I have a very special guest for you. As always, tonight we have Nina Avramovic Trancic. Welcome, Nina. Hi, Adela. Nice to see you tonight. Nice to see you too. And I see that I pronounced your last name wrong. As many Austrians do, there is an, uh, a funny story. Yeah. Um, I work at the ministry right now and it's very formal. Everyone is, uh, you know, Pazi. Uh, but due to my last name, they tend to be um, on the first name basis with me because okay. it's so complicated and I actually enjoy it. <laughs> so no one can say turn in it. <laughs> well done. Well done. Nina, so that's always, you know, a small talk. Uh, uh question or uh, discussion like your last, first last name uh, so you said that you work at ministry so what do you do actually um, I'm here since August this year so um, in my previous life I was a construction site manager and, and project manager for innovation and um, I got offered with this job which is head of the department for railway technology in the ministry for, for climate action and um, there are six sections. The biggest one is section for transport, which is ours, um, transport and traffic. And within it, there are two groups, uh, streets and, and railways. And in my groups, uh, there are six head, uh, heads of departments and um, I'm one of them, which is railway technology. <laughs> How does it feel to be one of the heads of department within, within the ministry as a foreigner, if I can say that, that way, because you, you know, you will tell us our story, but how, how does it really feel, you know? Yeah. Do you feel proud? Because I feel proud for you, even though, you know, we don't know each other, we just met, you know, and we, we know each other from, your, uh, from Ivana, your sister, and I followed a little bit your story, but I feel very proud as, as a Bosnian, a fellow Bosnian for you and your success. Yeah, I do. I do feel really proud because, um, you know, 18 years ago, I came with one suitcase to this country and my husband makes jokes he's like we can't even go on a, on a holiday now without five suitcases because we <laughs> have kids um but yeah I remember and back then I think it was just the beginning of of um ex-Yugoslavian people coming to this country as academics because Gastarbeiter that was something very usual and very known and to it I came also to Graz not Vienna which is even smaller and and um less used to foreigners um, but in the ministry, I don't actually notice the foreigner thing. It's mostly a generational thing, maybe. And um, coming to gender, I noticed that in the ministry, it's much more 50, 50 or 40, 60, let's say, um, uh, compared to, you know, private uh, wirtschaft. So um, compared to your previous so, job, like what yeah, you did at, at yeah. poor or at, uh, at Starbucks, it was generally a construction company. Construction generally. company, yeah. And and I'm really proud. I mean, there there has been a shift uh, regarding gender since we have a female minister mm -hmm. um, uh, for climate action. Just a year and a half ago, all of the heads of sections were men, and now it's 50-50, and it's and we feel it also downwards. But I have eight older men in my department and that um that 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 dynamics is really interesting and, and i think it's more about the age and not about um being foreign or female mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that it's it's encouraging it's good to know so because these things most of us don't know, right? So if, if you're not in this sector or if, you're, if you're not involved into this, you know, into female empowerment and knowing who does what and, and a different organization, uh, we tend not to know about this. And this should be a, one of the uh, good examples for all other you know, ministries and all other companies as well in Austria. Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you get asked the question, how did you end up in a technical, um, you know, yeah. uh, studies? You yeah. get asked that question a lot. Yeah, I, I, I used woman? yes before. So when I moved to Austria, so because I, we went with more than we came here with more than one suitcase, uh, <laughs> and. <laughs> 
<laughs> and everything that's uh, needed in the kitchen because there was nothing in, in the apartment back in the day. So it's now eight years that we came here. And I came here with a master's, a master's degree in telecommunication uh, from Sarajevo, which is fully recognized here in, in Austria one-to-one. -one. And I remember back then when I was doing my very first interviews, also at the university, at the Technical University in Vienna, I was as well applied for one position uh, as an assistant and a, and a PhD fellow. And as well in the, in the private sector, um, I went to the career calling that's a yearly event that happens in Austria. And they looked at me, uh, you know, um, the questions were strange for me. Like uh, you studied, you have a master's degree in telecommunication. And I was like, yeah, but that's not, that's ordinary where I come from. Yeah. You know, in Bosnia, so when I was, uh, where I was studying, so we had at least at telecommunication, we had 50-50, even more women actually at the telecommunication department, even more women than, than men. And that was a strange for me because true to be told, I didn't know the full, I didn't have the full picture. So how it is and how many women are actually studying or not studying at the technical university and, and being in general in the, in the tech industry. And that was surprising for me. It was like, the, and, and at the end of the day, it was, um, kind of uh, benefit, right? Because you, I, I took it, uh, like I understood where, where it's coming from because it wasn't, it's, it meant well. So it, didn't, it wasn't like, okay, yeah, you studied. And, and we, we like, it was with a lot of appreciation and a lot of interest behind it. So it was for me, a, you know, big plus, you know, uh, in my CV. So wherever I came, uh, I got a job more or less because you know because of the qualification the uh, work prior work experience and so on and so forth but I was still the only woman uh, in the team from 15 yeah. men 16 men and then later on in the global uh, unit and later on throughout the career there's less and less women because you know you yeah. have to get you have to start somewhere right uh, yeah. and that's where you know there's if there's less men at the starting point there will be definitely less in the five ten years later on Head. But for me, that was one of the biggest cultural shocks because I, in the first years of my career, I did uh, international products and I didn't really feel the difference. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I got asked in Austria, how did I end up studying civil engineering as a woman? And I thought, well, I, I was good in maths. <laughs> like, where, where does the question come from? Yeah. yeah. So that was one of the cultural shocks. Um, and yeah. Absolutely. So it's uh, once you know it, you're not, I, I didn't know the whole story behind it. So when my when we decided to come to Austria, it was like we decided to come to Austria on a student visa, because as you know, the Bosnia Bosnia is not the part of EU. So the, we had to uh, we needed a reason to stay here, and it needed to reason you know to have the to be able to find the apartment and insurance and so on and so forth. And I, I realized the full uh, story behind it. Um, so there are some in, great initiatives that are happening at the moment to make this number bigger because at the end of the day it's all about everything around us is technology and then if if us women are 50 percent of society and we are not at the table then it will be a very strange solution that it gets out there uh, to the market yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. nina how did you decide to come to austria so for us was okay closest to home uh easiest to get a student visa so what was for you um both of my sisters worked with foreigners. Uh, my, even the one that you know, she graduated from high yeah, school yeah. in New York State. And we, like, throughout my life, I had an exchange with, with mostly with Americans, but uh, internationally. And I always knew I wanted to study somewhere else. Uh, because in Tuzla at that time, and a civil engineering faculty, they thought stuff that was really old. The new norms were coming up, and they were still using old ones. And it was just it was getting too small for me. So like you, I looked where do I get a good education and near home. German, I was not so keen on, but I had it in high school, so that was OK. Um, the trick with me was I came in 2003, and there was a 100-year agreement between Bosnia and Austria that mm -hmm. Bosnians can study for free. And I came here. I ended um, my one semester of German. I enrolled college, and then the hundred-year agreement was done. <laughs> so, so that plus was gone. But uh, you know, the good education and and having a second language, and and everything was um, definitely a plus. Yes, absolutely. I, I, you know, I'm thinking here is education is for free, and it's un unbelievable. You know, you can study whatever you want and enroll whatever you want. 
I, it's unbelievable for me, you yeah. know, is it coming from, from Bosnia, which was still, again, free for good students, uh, but it was as well, you know, far, far away from, from home. Or, and you had to pay all what it comes with that. And there was just lack of uh, opportunities to work, right? Because that's no. not, you know, I, I like here because it's, it's like you study and you work aside a little bit, or you can work, you know, in, in your own field and you can start practicum or traineeship and so on. And in Bosnia, that was unknown, uh, unheard back then when yeah. I was studying. Now it's a little bit getting better, but it's definitely needed to, yeah. to, to be in the praxis. Um, Nina, I had so many. I have so many questions for you. So I'm just thinking, where sure. where should I uh, start from? So what do you do on a daily basis? Let's so let's talk about that. So how does your day look like uh, at the ministry? Oh my God, how, it's it's uh, so very different. Sometimes, like this week, the first two days, I was just uh, having like many meetings and socializing in the sense of. There was an event of um, innovation award being given and um, a workshop called um, innovation force for railway or something in that manner. And then yesterday I was at Vika until nine o'clock in the evening. And today I just took like an, a quiet day for me just to get everything done that I need uh, administrative wise. And then tomorrow I have a, um, an EU um, session. So it's very diverse. It's, it's incredibly diverse, but I like it. There's a lot of, lot of aspects of the railway that I'm getting to know that I didn't get to know on the construction side. And what are the railways of the future? So, or like in the next 10 years, let's, let's be you know, modest. In Europe? <laughs> yes <laughs> I, I, we discussed you know traveling by railway and and people in austria are really good um at that you know yes. we have this yearly clima ticket and whatnot but if i wanted to travel to bosnia by train no there's no possibility so i guess it depends also on which part of the europe we are talking about but one of my special thesis, and I'm in love with that, it was already my master's thesis, is high, high speed railway. You know, mm -hmm. If you ever took a train from Vienna to Salzburg, you know how nice it is, like riding, gliding 2000 kilometers per hour and like the slow cars on the highway are just behind you. So um, for me, it's that. And what we are discussing right now in the sector is, uh, you know, canceling um, uh, local flights. Um, I don't know if people know this, but flights from Linz to Vienna have been very reduced okay. before we had like, like up to five. And I, I think I'm questioning if they even have one per day, but there's 12 connect train connections per day from Vienna airport to Linz airport. Mm -hmm. um, so it's more, it's just more convenient. And you know, also you can take a train in um, Linz railway station and already checking your luggage and everything that you need for flight in Vienna. Um, Fran, uh, France is already there that they, um, they actually um, limited flights less than, uh, for the distance less than 350 kilometers are not allowed anymore because of the climate effects and, and whatnot. Um, and the next airports we are discussing are Graz and, and Salzburg. So, I, I hope for a lot of shift from flying to, um, to taking the train. And in Austria, we now have nice trains to Amsterdam, to Italy and whatnot. And um, I hope to see the trend to go that way because, you know, Fridays for future and everything, we just need to, to do something so that our kids also have a nice planet to live on. Absolutely. And I hope we get this high speed train to Bosnia. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know you go for Tuzla immediately, but be generous to Ukraine as well. When I go. <laughs> don't forget, I keep you <laughs> don't forget. You know, you can go to Bihać. You know, it's nice, and then we go to Tuzla, and then oh, uh, you know, my daughter's name is Una, and it's the prettiest river in Bosnia that's actually in Ukraine. <laughs> so yeah, there's a part of the heart also there. Absolutely. So don't, don't forget uh, that part. I would really, really love to, you know, take that train uh, ride with my daughter in, in the future and, and show mm -hmm. her. 
uh, part of uh, show her Bosnia. Uh, so I always uh, make jokes, and uh, it's not a joke, that I know more of Austria than I know of Bosnia, and yeah. that's uh, sad. Yeah, it's it's very sad. It's very sad, and now especially with the kid, it's just uh, when I when I look at the pictures, I, I show it to Esma the other day a book of Bosnia, and I was like very emotional. I said, like, okay, you know, I need to take you there. You know, I really really need to take you there, uh, so she can see it. Um, so how well you know Austria? So is it is it the bad as in my case? Mm, I wish to know more, but through my construction sites, I got to know some parts. Uh, my first job was in Linz, so I got to know that part of Austria. And then we had a lot of work with Salzburg. And then obviously I studied in Graz, so I know that part and Vienna. And, uh, you know, Vienna and, and, and the area around it. And then uh, my last project was Karlban, that's the link between Graz and, and Klagenburg. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, bits and pieces, but not all villages. And there's so much to see, and it's very beautiful. So, I hope to get to know even more. Yeah, it's a beautiful country. So, it, it really is. So, it has all of it, and it's close to sea, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said to me, like, Vienna has it all except for C. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, for us Balkan people, summer vacation is seaside. Yes, I guess. definitely, yeah. definitely. So I cannot picture myself yet, uh, you know, to be in the mountains, but uh, let's see that. Who knows, yeah. Who knows? Lina, I told you about, I posted your story a little bit in our Business Woman of Bosnia and Herzegovina um, association that we have here in, in Austria, in Vienna. And one of the questions from the uh, from the audience, so what from Azra, Azra, I hope you're watching this, was how do you do all of this? You know, uh, how do you, how does your, you know, where do you get your energy? So how do you recharge? Because I think that's also one of the, the big questions for, for us all nowadays, men and women, moms and uh, women without uh, kids. Uh, because there's so many opportunities out there and how do you, you know, put all of that, what you want within one day? Yeah. Oh, well, <clears throat> you know, you posted a very nice story about this little girl is me. And I could also see a lot of um, similar things, you know, all of us that went through war and whatnot, uh, you know, and their memories and, and education was always something that was giving hope and always yeah. possible, no matter if you're, ugly or cute or poor or rich, whatever, you know, education was the right way to go. And in really early age, I, um, you know, I, I got mocked about my head being so big, but actually I was very long and skinny. <laughs> so, and, but then I thought, you know, if I have a big head, there's a big brain. And so let's use it. And I was always very good uh, uh, at sports and also learning, you know, in school. Um, so I, I guess, you know, that's one of my passions throughout my life was what, this, this um, urge to learn. Yeah. And um, at the university in Graz, I, I wasn't sure what I'm going to what I'm going to uh, do with my master's, which which is going to be. And then came the professor for the railways and he was so passionate talking about railways. Mm -hmm. And I thought, OK, this is what I want to do. This is the passion I want to have in my future job. And thankfully, I did the master's in, in, in railways, in transport, and I, I do feel that passion. So that's one thing that um, gives me the energy throughout the day. Um, and so, I mean, I do get physically tired, but at the end of the day, you're charged with this also positive energy. Um, and I told you also in preparation to this conversation that I have like the lucky card here. My mom is here. So we have help with, with kids. We have two kids, which are five and, and seven. So it's school and kindergarten to full-time jobs. And um, it wouldn't be possible without her. There's a saying, you know, behind every strong woman, there is a mom taking care of her uh, kids. And that's definitely, you know, I mean, I guess we could also afford a babysitter, but it's never as the same as, you know, having the grandma there. Yeah, so it's definitely, you know, also this, um, this contrast between, you know, the work life and where I get to express my, you know, my brains and my, my passion. And then I have this effect where I go home and it's totally 
other dynamics, it's cuddling, it's oh, they also fight with each other. But, you know, lately, I let them fight it out. Um, but, you know, it's just, I don't know, I think you some people are just like I'm a bundle of energy and, and that's what I mean you said that you were very active in your pregnancy yeah. and I think the worst thing for you would be like if somebody locked you down to the desk and made you do the same thing every day yes yes absolutely and you can see that in my resume as well so yeah. I told you that uh after a, um, a year and a half too so I'm in work and I was like okay what's next uh yeah. and I know my um I have a second family in, in the Netherlands and I wrote about it because they gave me the scholarship. So they're like my father and, and mother. And uh, uh, last time he wrote me, so you're already two years in this job. What is What's happening? happening? <laughs> What's happening? Is everything okay? <laughs> uh, but as you said, you know, there's so much nowadays, especially, so it's always a tricky um, to choose from you know there's if we, i see the world of opportunities and when you see that way so there's like oh my god there's so many opportunities and at the end of the day it's also about you know figuring out your priorities and your focus which is then a challenge because you say have you have to i have to commit to three things you know and now now we, with the baby it's even different it's even more focused because i have to say no to do even more uh things than i i did before because before it was like okay yes I like this project so I will you know dedicate hours to it I will volunteer here I will mentor over there and I will take an extra um, uh, whatever job or project or you know sit to the next flight and go somewhere to visit the client and now the life is uh, starting to be different and, and not in 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 like uh, restricting me but it's just figuring out okay what is really 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 important to me and yes. what is okay, what is nice to have and, and what, is, what is must. So for me, the, the, the motherhood uh, brought that perspective in my life. Otherwise I was like all over the places, like everything yeah. is so cute and nice and interesting. You know, I think there's a high expectation for, for parents and especially for mothers, because I had a feeling when I became a mother, that people expected me, you know, to know everything and to, you know, just, go with your life but it's a learning process you know there's a, this new person there and it needs your attention and whatnot and it just takes time to you know find your new ways and your new persona and who are you in this yeah. context and um you know that the law like muta sets yeah. um defines that um uh, ma ma uh, maternity leave is now um being um um counted for your years of experience yeah. by law everybody that got a baby after september 2019 have to have this like ex as experience years because my kids are older i don't have it you know if i change the company it's not counted as um, my year of maternity leave is not counted as a year of experience mm -hmm. and i wrote really a funny like a funny email that was just 50 percent funny and i said my best leadership skills were developed within this year because my employees couldn't communicate, their needs kept changing, <laughs> every day was different, and I needed to meet them, their needs and lead them through it successfully. So, you know, it's also something where your my life benefited from it later. Yes. Absolutely. So I, I see it now and ESMA is only uh, six and a half months and I see exactly what you said. And I, I have a um, there's a Vienna family network group that we uh, there's like a mom's group, WhatsApp group where we meet, where we talk and exchange. And I see that we all have that. And at the beginning, as you said yourself, so I'm always thinking the way I grew up and the way ESMA is growing up. So the way I grew up was very richer because I had the you know, grandpas and grandmas and aunts and uncles and these and that, the whole village was around me. Mm. And now I'm thinking, you know, it was the last, if I compare that, like in the last 30 years, what changed is that, you know, from being in a community, it was, you know, I'm striped out to, you know, a room, an apartment, yeah. no matter how comfortable it is, no matter how, you know, great location it is or whatever, how many square meters and so on. But at the end of the day, when your husband, so when your husband goes wor to work, I stay home uh, with the baby. And exactly what you said yourself, you know, the expectations is like, I should know how to, you know, 
be around the baby and I don't because it's it's a yeah. new human so it's um this expectation can be very very nasty you know if, if you go into that hole you know if, if, if yeah. you get into that and like what people expect what village expects or whatever community and so on and if I just decided after the third month I said okay I'm going with the flow I don't care about you know all the checklists and how how many centimeters does she need to be how often should she be eating and and sleeping and so on and so forth because at the end of the day every kid is different yeah. we, we claim that as the first thing and then it's like if she's not sleeping and everybody else is sleeping it's like what's wrong with her you know yeah. so, somehow this you know it doesn't f- uh, fit together yeah. Uh, yeah so I I agree with you and uh I'm, I would like to do something next year, so I will tell you about it next time, uh, about creating a motherhood summit festival around uh, so next year to get these uh, stories and uh, topics uh, beyond. Uh, so it shouldn't be lonely, you know, the, the motherhood should be, you know, it's, it's so beautiful and it, sh- it should bring us together, especially, you know, us uh, without families here, right? So most of us are here without the families. And now this COVID was terrible for, for most of us because you couldn't see, you couldn't travel, they couldn't visit you. So it was a, you know, very lonely kind of, uh, kind of time and experience. And I would like to, you know, bring us even closer. So even though my sister is not here, I have you, I have, you know, Sabina, I have Gina, I have this and that, because you need a village. Of, yeah. of women to, to raise a kid, uh, no matter technology, you know, no matter location, it's still the same as it was for my mom back in the days or for my grandma, that you need hundreds of uh, hands. Get well, I, I, th- I see a similar effect, you know, in the business world also with grown-ups, where um, before life was a lot, of, a lot slower and people had more time, I mean, I feel it was like that and people met other people more and the yeah. families were closer. So Corona people had their parents nearby, not just for taking care of kids. They had their friends, they had exchanges with neighbors. And nowadays we spend, we just talk about productivity. We, yeah. we, we push people into burnouts from productivity and productivity. Yeah. And a lot of our lives happen in the work. So I feel sometimes, um, sometimes leaders are almost seen as um, all of these functions that we had before, you know, you should be your team's friend and your team's neighbor and your team's leader mm-hmm. and your team's cousin and whatnot, because basically a lot of people don't just go home to sleep and come back to work again. Yeah. So it, it's where your life happens. Yes. You know? Yes, absolutely. And I see that with, um, you know, with motherhood and uh, I'm really looking forward to, you know, go back as well to work and, and bring all these new uh, superpowers uh, with, with me that, you know, you get, as you said yourself, it just gets uh, clearer for me, at least my life got uh, my purpose, you know, uh, got very, very clear. Uh, and and sharpening every day and and the skills that you said yourself you have to go with 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 the day you know I make plans up front and then everything changes you know like that and I said like kid is like a trend in business things change <laughs> right there's just something like a high speed as you, as you like to say a high speed train coming in and just like okay now I have to change the whole schedule you know so what what do I do so do I get sad and uh, like okay or do we start all over the whole process and figure out something that makes fun for for both of us yeah yeah uh, Nina, this, this is a channel for, for people who are planning to come to Austria as well. So uh, what would be your tips um, for those people who are watching this and thinking, yes, I'm coming to Austria? Oh, my God. Learn the language while you're at home. That's the first thing. I had a great teacher in high school that taught me a lot of German. And then I spent only one semester at the... And at that time, you had to do the German yes. course. You weren't able to just take an exam. And I was already at the B2 level, B2 to C1, so it was pretty high. But then I went to university and it was like, I could not understand anything. It was like, the, um, do you know the movie 13th Warrior with Antonio Banderas? <laughs> Where he, he gets, as an Arab guy, he gets sent to the Nordic country as a warrior. <laughs> and he's sitting there every night with the, with the tribe and he doesn't understand the word. And then throughout the movie and throughout the days, he starts recognizing work okay. and then he starts recognizing sentences. And then like many months afterwards, he can also talk and there are every, everybody surprised. And that was like it for me. I was like, 
okay, I know this word, so happy, <laughs> you know, I did my maths exam, I did my IT exam, everything that was my statistics exam, everything that was with numbers, uh, but it took me a lot, and but for the first three years, I think I, I got a year and a half of, of the faculty done, and then in three years, I got the other three and a half years done, you know, yep. so it's, it was because of the language, and for me, that's the most valuable thing you can do. Mm. Thank in you. Preparation. Yeah. Yeah, if you can do that, so definitely upfront, even though if your job, for instance, for people who are coming here for the job, uh, they have a job already, even if it's in English, it's good uh, to know the second language, it's good for to understand the people around you, to understand the culture, to be active and member not of to limit society. yourself to yeah. that precise job, you know, just to explore. Yeah. And, and I mean, as you said, Austria is really great and you can also learn the language here yeah. and whatnot. I just found it much more valuable to learn it before, especially for the students coming here. Yeah, it yeah. saves you, uh, as you said, a couple of years in, in between. Yeah. Nina, thank you so much for being our guest today. So we had so many topics, we went back and forth. I can hear my little one uh, calling me. But before we wrap up, and I'm sure on your side it is the same, uh, but before we wrap up, um, can you tell us what you're reading at the moment or any book that you would like to recommend? Yes, I finally got the time to read the classics. You know, I was uh, reading a lot of current things from Lean In to whatnot. Yeah. But I just read um, To Kill a Mockingbird and wow. was amazed that I missed this piece of art. And I'm just enjoying right now taking a step back and, yeah. you know, going back to basics. And, yeah. And, and that's a kind of literature. Good. So I'm not there yet. I still go to the, you know, business literature, to professional literature. It's, just, it's automatically, you know, and yeah. I, I need to make this step. And I'm telling that to myself over and over again. Yeah, try the classics. Uh, <laughs> it's a process, I think, you know, once I have shifted to this one, it, it still keeps me um, engaging. You know, it's still funny for me because I recognize many situations in it. And then I kind of create pictures and dialogues in my head you know thinking oh yeah this and that so it's still entertaining for me even though it's a <laughs> professional book well that's the good energy that you still have in you <laughs> thank you nina so much for being our guest today uh, it was really a pleasure thank I you wish, for having me thank you so much i wish you all the best with your new job and to bring that high speed trains and uh, and taking care for our future for us and for our kids as well Thanks, Adela. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for watching. I'm looking forward to reading from you. Drop a comment, uh, share with your friends, um, and send me, um, if you know someone who has a great story to share, send me a contact detail, connect us on LinkedIn. And yeah, that's it. Have a great evening and talk to you soon. Bye.